Now this chaff can certainly be saved. Um, really, really good fire starter right here. Yeah, so um, you know, doing it outside. If I try to move the camera around at all to get better angles, you, you just can't keep it properly covered and protected from the snow. So, okay. So the next thing we want to do is just soak that briefly in warm water. Okay, I'm afraid I had to do this off camera. When you get this stuff in warm water, uh, you only need to put it in there for probably between five and ten seconds. If you leave it in there much longer, it starts to curl up um, as if it was on the tree, but get tight, and it actually hardens. So I'm afraid I couldn't do this on camera because it just wasn't enough time. But as you can see, I have clamped that down. Now I put the handle of, a, of an old busted chisel in there to allow a little bit of room for the handle of the knife. The rest of it I've clamped as flat as I can because there will be some um, spring back. So I've clamped that up just about as flat as I can. I wasn't too concerned about that spot right there because that will be will be the drainage hole so that if any water gets in this thing um, it will be able to drain back out. I wanted a fair bit of overlap here from the knife as well because I'm making this as a mountain man carry so the belt loop is going to be up here somewhere uh, because it's going to ride in a not quite uh, not quite a cross draw but uh, I'll show you when I get there. It's been oops, several hours, let me move that. <coughs> this stuff has dried pretty much in the shape that we wanted, pretty flat. There's still a bit of an arch across the top there. Still a little bit open here, so we're going to have to, but when we stitch it, I think we can squeeze that up a little bit. The other end has actually formed for the handle somewhat. This isn't going to be, you know, super tight. It's not like a fitted leather sheath. The reason it's so thick is because it was from, you know, quite a large tree. Uh, this particular tree was... Um, over a foot and well over a foot in diameter. Um, the other thing is, so it's an older tree, so it's got quite thick, heavy bark. The other thing is uh, that makes this difficult to work with is that this was just off of one of the chunks of firewood in my woodshed. So this tree was cut probably a year ago, and it's been just aging in there uh, for this year's firewood. So you know, it's it's dried out. It's pretty tough. It didn't really want to bend too easily. Fresh bark off of a, you know, peeled off a, a living tree would be far more pliable. Um, and a smaller tree with, with somewhat thinner bark would be even more pliable. The problem with that is that, uh, you know, you'd have to kill a tree just for the sake of doing this, which I'm not prepared to do. This is the piece that I split, uh, and you saw me carving this uh, out by the lake there. What I've done, I've recessed this grab my knife so that the knife fits in now because I've had to make it sloppier looking here because the width of the blade here is far greater than the width of the blade here so you know if I tapered this in nicely to make a great fit I'd never get the knife out I've beveled this edge so that when you're putting the knife in it's not going to be catching and grabbing it's going to go in smoothly and I've left this sitting up here just a little bit proud so that the, the, you'll get some pressure from the uh, from the bark to help keep the knife secure in the in the uh, sheath. Make a nice, a nice lacing. Once this stuff dries, 
And if you noticed <coughs> in that video that I made, uh, when I made my pack, it dries very, very hard. Now, it, it's not quite like rawhide. It doesn't actually shrink, maybe slightly, but not, not in a big way. But it does dry. Uh, it's just come out of the hot water. It was hot tap water. It wasn't boiled or anything. And it was in there for, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes. I may remake this sheath in the spring. Uh, with fresh materials. We'll see how it stands up. I'll be using it during the winter. So if it stands up well, uh, that might be good, and I might just keep it. Uh, if not, then I will be looking at making another one. couple of extra holes here so that I can leave that a little bit loose come back up see a little bit of a looseness there still temporarily I'm going to come back up through this one and through that loop and then I'm going to start to pull that down cinch it up and then I'm going to pull this one over and cinch it up. That should make a good and tight hold once I get this all nicely dried out. Let's work it tight. Don't pull too hard. I mean, we are working with roots here. They're tough, tough roots, but they're still roots, so 